Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be going over my September favorites and fails. And just like last month, I have quite a bit to talk about, but that's not the only thing that is the same. I also have a giveaway for you guys. So if you wanna see what it is and what the rules are, just wait till the very end of the video. And I wanna congratulate Tamara or Tamara Ray Brenna. I, I've, I'm just gonna leave the name right here. You guys know that I mispronounce words all the time. It's like my thing. I apologize. I mean, no, no disrespect at all. But congratulations to her. She is the one that won the giveaway for the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. And we are going to be doing yet another giveaway today. This is something that I kind of want to continue doing. You guys let me know what your thoughts are. It feels good to give back to you guys, the ones that are watching my channel and supporting me. So if you like this, let me know if you're like, nah, I'm not here for the giveaway thing. Just, yeah, give me some feedback. Anywho, strap in. There's a lot. There's just a lot. And I'm going to start off with a foundation. And it is from Shiseido. This is the Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation. I have this in two different shades. I picked up the wrong one. I noticed, I was like, this looks a little light. <laughs> I have this in 220, which is going to be great for my winter shade, but my summer shade is 260. I adore this. The way it goes on my skin is so beautiful. It is a medium to full coverage. It lasts so incredibly well, I'm telling you. It just instantly makes me look like I have a great skin day. This covers everything. It smooths out everything. It's just beautiful. It doesn't irritate my pores. Again, longevity is perfection. There's only one thing that I would change about this, and it is that it has SPF in it. Now, some people like SPF in their foundations. For me, foundations with SPF in them can break me out after constant use. It's not usually going to do it like the first one or two times, but I have to be careful with this, but I love it so much that I kind of risk it. I have worn this for a week straight and I've, you know, I've gotten a little bump or two, but it's just worth it because of the way that this looks. I'm, I just love it so much. I'm telling you guys, this would probably bump out one of my top two, which is Fenty and Anastasia Beverly Hills the Luminous Foundation. I'm still loving those, but it would probably be like bumping one of those two out if it didn't have the SPF in there. Anywho, I love this stuff. Speaking of complexion, ah, <laughs> that's all I can say. It's just like, oh my God. All right. These are from By Terry. It's the Hyaluronic tinted hydra powders i cannot tell you how in love i am with these this is something that i think i'm going to have to go ahead and repurchase the shade 200 is this it right here yeah i'm already halfway through this one they have an array of shades there's only one that i got they these were sent to me there's only one that i don't really use and it is the number 100 fair it's a little bit yellow, but I think I might be able to use this during the winter. My favorite shades are the rosy light to do right underneath my eyes. I have that on today to just kind of brighten everything up and make my pores look amazing. That's the thing with this. It will make everything perfected, but it doesn't dry out your skin. It gives you a matte luminous finish. It's just beautiful. It's hyaluronic acid. You know, it does amazing things for your skin. So you're not gonna look cakey, you're not going to look dry, but you're also not going to look oily either. It's just beautiful. It looks like skin. This powder is one of my favorite powders I have ever tried ever in my entire makeup life. Um, let me get back to the shades. Rosy light for my under eyes to brighten everything up. I've actually found that apricot light works on my face. That is what I used to buff. I initially thought that this was going to be one of those that was just a little bit too dark because if you look at it, let me open it up. Uh, it has this slight little orangey peachy tint apricot tint to it and I thought that it was going to be too dark I used it one day and I was like oh it's 
ta-da, it's beautiful and it really brightens up the skin as well. But the one that I like to set my face with is number 200 and this is the one that I'm going to be running out of soon. <laughs> Probably not soon. The biggest thing is that I do makeup so often and a lot of times, you know, I will do a tutorial and then I will come back, wash off my face and then I do another look. So I end up going through product sometimes a little quicker than normal. But if you were at all interested in these powders, I definitely suggest them. This is a product that is great for everybody and especially, especially those of you who do not typically like powders, but you want to have something to set your makeup and you don't want it to look like you have a bunch of powder on your face. Beautiful. Another thing from By Terry, this one I purchased because I wanted to add a few things in when I was doing the video on those powders. And now I'm hooked. I feel like I'm going to need more of these. <laughs> this is the Terribly Denseless Blush Number no. 1 Platonic Blonde. I'm currently wearing this right now. And again, it gives that silky skin like finish. Let me swatch this. It is so incredibly creamy, but it's not something that is going to emphasize your pores or make you look oily or anything like that. It's not glittery, nothing. It just has a little bit of radiance to it and a lot of pigmentation. It's buildable. You can shear it out or you can make it a little bit more intense. And I have been going to town with this blush. So like I said, I think I'm going to have to get a few more. The compact on this, I swear, I could throw this at somebody and I would bust their head open. That is a really weird thing to say, I know, but it just makes me feel like a rock. It's so heavy, it feels like a rock. Or you could like skip it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm being silly. Okay, anyway, another blush product. This one is from Hourglass from the Ghost Holiday Collection. I love every single piece from that collection. I love it all. I've been using it all. But the one thing that has just really stolen my heart is the blush palette. I can't get over how beautiful this is. I love that there's different textures in here. So you're getting the traditional hourglass blushes in here, which are these two. And then these right here are the strobe finishes. One thing that I was just extremely elated about with this is that Brilliant Nude, which is a permanent shade, all of the other ones are limited edition, actually shows up on me. <laughs> I put this uh, shade in my fails or products that I regretted purchasing because I bought it, I returned it, I bought it again, and people were telling me, oh, you just need one with more marble in it. I don't know why, but I wasn't having any luck with it at all. And in this palette, it finally works. So every single one of these blushes work on my skin tone. Hourglass kills it with the powders. These two right here, again, are a little bit more of that strobing type of effect. So it kind of gives more of a lit from within than the By Terry. The By Terry is a softer glow. These are a little bit more intense, but still not making my pores or anything look horrendous or any kind of texture on my skin. And then these two right here are the traditional formula. Now, if you're looking at this palette, one of my favorite things about it, not only the fact that they have different textures in here, but also there's not a single shade in here that is repeated. Every single one of these are a different color. So I can take this traveling and I know that I'm going to have a blush that works for whatever I look I am going to do. I'm going to swatch these. This right here, if you are darker than like NC30, 30, 30, maybe, because <laughs> it works on me right now and I am tan. This is not going to work for you. It's going to be like a highlight. And then we have this one right here, which is more pink. This one is more on the natural side. And then this one is coral amazingness. Do you see the pigmentation on that? Beautiful. All right, moving on. <laughs> I'm looking at this pile of palettes right here and you guys are going to die. Let's talk about something other than palettes. Brushes. One of my favorite things in the entire world. Brushes. I was so, so lucky and very grateful to get the Sonia G Sky Set. I'm telling you guys, when I got them, I just felt like I don't know. I made it in this world. I just, ah, I love it. I love them so much. This is my favorite 
face set that she has done. It's like she picked my brain. She was like, what does Mel want? And then she made them. Because I loved the brush set that she sent me so much, I purchased another one. That's why you're seeing so many brushes here. Uh, where's my other? I think some of these have already made it to like my wash bin because as you can see, some of these are dirty. And then like this one's clean, but, and then this one has not been taken out of its little thing, whatever. So this is the sky set and in the sky set, you're getting the, what is this called? The worker fan, which <laughs> I told you guys I was going to purchase the sculpt one. I did loving this too, but you can see the difference. I love this one for buffing all over my face, like my buffing powder, but this one actually works really well for me for bronzing my skin. I can get in this way, I can turn it this way, I can get a really great blend out of it, and it is so soft. All of these have now been washed so you can actually see the shape of them. So you get that one. <laughs> you can see that this is the one that's been washed because it's a little bit bigger than this one here. I have to have two of these because I want one for my bronzer and I want one for buffing at the end of my makeup. And like I have several brushes that I like to do that with, but this one I really like. This is called the Master Face. I seriously could have 10 of these and it wouldn't be too much. So if these come out as individuals, you better believe I'm going to pick up more of this specific brush. I just love it. It has the perfect domed shape. It's not too big. It's not too small. I love the most for buffing and for my bronzer. Next up, we have this guy. <laughs> All right, so this one's been washed and this one has not. And this is called the soft cheek. And it means what it says. This, do you see this action right here? Do you see this? Oh my goodness. This feels so amazing on the skin and it gives you an airbrush finish. This is a brush you can use to pick up something that is too pigmented and be able to have it apply lightly. And then you can also build. This also works really well for bronzer all over. I still like to use the master face more. I particularly like this one for blush, but yeah, we've got two of those. <laughs> the next brush in the collection is the classic cheek. This is the one that I like to use if I want to do the stippling motion. So like this right here, sometimes the blushes are not as dark as I need them to be, or I can't grab enough product to get them on my face. This one will grab it and then I can stipple it on. You can still do like the buffing motion to blend it out, but I like to be able to really press in my product with this one. This one I have not opened yet. And then the last one, which I think is my, I don't know, like I said, I feel like she picked my brains with these. Oh, okay, washed unwashed. <laughs> I have been using this for highlighter. I have one for highlighter. That is this one right here that has not been washed. And then this one right here is what I am using to set underneath my eyes. Unless I am baking, I have just been using this. And I'm not even a brush girl when it comes to doing my under eye and setting it. For whatever reason, this is the bee's knees. And that completes this collection. From what I understand, Unfortunately, the set won't be back for a while, but I just have to tell you how much I love it. And when it does come back, you definitely need to get your hands on it. If you're a Sonia G lover or you're a brush lover, this is definitely worth it. These are top notch. A mascara that I have been loving is the new one from Laura Mercier. It is the Caviar Volume Panameric something. Panamera, blah, 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 whatever. My sticker is covering it. I still have not gone through my deluxe sample. I have ordered the full size, but I'm not gonna open that until this is completely gone. It is what I'm wearing right now. And I just really, really like it. When I first started using this, I felt like it didn't give me as much volume as like my Lancome Monsieur Big, the Pat McGrath, uh, the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara, but I feel like as it is aging, it's doing more and more and more, and I'm falling more and more in love with it. I really like the brush on it. It's kind of like this twisted, I don't know. The bristles are twisted around, and I can really separate my lashes 
and I get the perfect amount of volume and length with this. Now, if you're somebody who wants more volume, then I would just stick with the other ones. But if you like to have that in between, this is a really great one. I've been reaching for the other ones more so when I have a darker eye and I feel like my lashes need to be like a little bit thicker so that you can see them better. But yeah, I'm loving this. Lisa J, I 100% blame you for this next favorite. I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about because we've had conversations via text, but the Glam Core Ricky Tall Mirror. I saw it in her video. I saw her playing with it. 10 seconds later, add to cart, purchase, and then I waited for it to come. I'm gonna insert a clip of this. I don't have a permanent spot for it yet because the dresser that I bought for it is taller than I wanted it to be. So I'm kind of playing around with where I am putting it, but I've been moving this thing all around the house. I have been putting it in front of me to take pictures. I have been putting it on in front of my TV where I do, I do my skincare routine at this little desk like thing. And then my TV is pushed back towards the wall. I put my mirror right in front of there and then I click it to the highest brightness and I do my makeup. It's very convenient whenever this in here, sometimes I'm getting ready at like five o'clock. The sun comes through the window so harshly that when I'm trying to do my makeup in this mirror, it absolutely does not work out. I can't see myself. And so I will go into the bedroom and do it there. This mirror is everything. It even comes with a little circular mirror that is magnified. And you could just click straight onto the mirror and you've got your lights all around you that again are adjustable it has a little remote i'm in love with this thing and like you can see the stand in my little video i can put it on its side i can put it straight up and down i've been keeping it on its side because that's how i've been liking to use it just on the daily as i'm going through my bedroom and you know doing little videos and stuff but you can also if you want to record on your phone, it has a little gadget that clips onto your phone. You put it on the mirror, it's magnetized, and you could just start doing videos. It is phenomenal. I have loved Glamcore for a long time. You guys don't see them, but right now, way up there, I have the Glamcore. I don't remember what they're called, but they're two rectangular sets of LED lights and they like bend all over the place. When I did freelance makeup, I always took those with me because you can sit there and bend them into like this tiny little bag and then it has a stand. When I first started doing makeup tutorials when I was in my bedroom, that is what I used for my lighting. Now I have a ring light and the Glamcore is behind me. But these lights have lasted me five years. Not a single bulb has gone out. They are amazing. So when I saw the mirror, I was like, I already know the Glamcore is great quality. I have to have it. And I am so, 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 so happy with it. All right. Now I'm going to get into the 10 million eyeshadow palettes that I have. I'm just going to do a quick disclaimer. Yes, I like every single one of these. I can't tell you which ones I like more than others yet. What I am going to do is an update video, just like with the foundations, with Foundation Geddon. I did a video where I ranked them. I am gonna do the same thing with all of the palettes that have come out recently, and I'm going to rank them for you guys because I know it can be hard when you're trying to decide which eyeshadow palette is best for you or if you like the same tones as I do what do you want what do you think you should get what do you think is worth it price wise and all that but for now I'm just going to tell you my favorites and there's a lot because there's been a lot of palettes coming out and there's been quite a few that have impressed me so these are in no particular order I have them in a stack right here so I'm just gonna grab them and start talking about them. <laughs> First off, we have a little mini palette from Too Faced and it is the Hot Buttered Rum Palette. This one shocked me just as well as the actual gingerbread extra spicy palette. So I'm gonna talk about these at the same time. The Hot Buttered Rum Palette, I prefer the smell of this one to the extra spicy, but I don't mind either one of them. I love opening these up and it's making me think of Christmas. Like I'm not ready for Christmas, but I am at the same time. 
whatever. I'm really ready for Halloween. But these colors are so beautiful. This is the perfect palette to take traveling because you can do more dramatic looks like take this section right here boom you've got the best smoky eye ever and then over here you have a beautiful neutral eye the look that i did with this included all of the shades except for these two and this little addition being all warm and then having this shade in here makes the world of difference this color is stunning i wore this like i said in the video that i was going to i wore this all over the lid all into the crease and just glued this shade out boom it was so so pretty so i'm really happy with this one and i'm also really pleasantly surprised with the gingerbread extra spicy palette companies need to get better about their pictures your promo pictures because i saw this and i was like i don't i, I don't get it <laughs> i was not intrigued by it at all and now that i have it i'm smelling it again it smells really really good i love this the colors have so much pigmentation. The colors are more unique. They have that little bit of extra spiciness to it. As I mentioned in the video, in case you did not see it, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know, I don't really see the extra spiciness to it. But when I'm applying it to the eyes, they are so, so pigmented. I love them. And I love the amount of looks that you can get out of this. I love the tones that they picked out for it. And I love this little pop right here. Normally, I'm not for a pop of blue. It kind of drives me crazy. But this color, let me show you. It has sparkle and depth. And it's just stunning. And it goes so well with this palette. Love it. All right. Now, if you saw my Natasha Denona ranking video, yes, I'm still going to do the Pat McGrath. I already have them even in order of which ones I like best to least, but um, time, yeah, time. Uh, there's so many different things. I have 10 palettes that I haven't even touched yet because there's been so much. There's been so many things coming out that I'm having trouble keeping up. So I apologize if there's one that you guys wanna see that I haven't gotten to yet. It's just time. It's really, really is. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have already saw me like throwing this around. Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. This is something you have to experience on your own. Please do not go into Sephora or anywhere else and swatch this, A. Eh? Sephora, when you're going in and you're swatching them, a million people have already swatched them. So their oils from their fingers are all in it. You know, it's been destroyed. And swatches don't mean everything. I can tell you from experience that a lot of times the colors that I think are going to just look terrible or not work well have been better performing shadows on the eye than some of the ones that I thought were going to work really well. This palette is so stunning, and the reason why I like it the most out of all of the Natasha Denona palettes are the different textures in here. A, I love the colors, but the textures in here are amazing. You're getting this almost wet-like formula, and again, this is one of the reasons why I say do not touch this in Sephora. Look at these. They are gorgeous, and they work so well. She had put this in um, the Cranberry palette, and it, it just, it didn't work as well as it did here. And I was concerned when I purchased this that it was going to be the case as well with this, but it's not. And then you've got these shades. Like, look at this. It's beautiful, and it looks like you would have a whole lot of the same but you don't, you really don't. It's, oh, they're gorgeous. I love this palette so much. And if you can't tell by how dirty it is, I use it a lot. It is top drawer. It stays in my top drawer. Now for me, this is probably the most anticipated palette out of all of them. I was waiting for months for this to come out and I never got unexcited. You know, sometimes companies will release a little sneak peek here and a little sneak peek there and there, and then you just get like, I'm over it. But I was so excited about this palette that I was like on my toes, like tiptoes, just waiting. And it is from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This is a Mel palette. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I garden, like flower garden, my flower garden. I 
have a garden with flowers and roses are my favorite. I have several of them. The only flower I like more than a rose is an orchid. I have roses on my hands. I have orchids on my arms. I just love them. And when I saw the theme for this palette, I was like, please, 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 please do the rose justice. And they did. You can't get any more rose than this. It is utter perfection. Every shade in here works so beautifully. These are so pigmented. You just can't, you just look I, speechless. This is my favorite palette that Give Me Glow has done. I have several of their singles and then I have a couple of their palettes. The one thing that stinks with them is that once they have like ran out of stock, you have to wait a while for them to restock. But this palette is worth it, you guys. If these are your colors, and you love roses like I do, you definitely should get your hands on this. And I even use, I don't think I told you guys, but it was listed in the description box. I used this shade right here as a blush and it was beautiful, beautiful. This palette was probably shocker of the year for me. I did not want this. I was not going to pick it up, but I had so many comments asking me if I was going to get it. People were really responding to this, not in a way that I had anticipated, again, Promo pictures, guys, promo pictures. The Naked Urban Decay, or let me say, restart. Urban Decay Naked Honey Palette. It's because how they put it on here. I wasn't interested, was not interested, but in person, this looks so much more appealing than it does online. I love the looks that I get out of this, and they have stepped up their game, just like with Too Faced and Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't know what they're doing, but they are doing something right. It just seems like, you know, a lot of the naked palettes, I feel like I have to really kind of build up color. And I was anticipating that being the case with this. Absolutely not. These are pigmented and you would think that you're going to get just a bunch of the same look, but I feel like this one actually has a much better variety. Yes, it's in the same kind of family of colors, but when they're on your eyes, you definitely can get more looks out of it. And this right here, I love this one. This is like a gold green. I tried not to use it in my tutorial. Yeah, it didn't happen. I used it, definitely used it. But I think this is my favorite palette when it comes to the Naked palettes that they have done thus far. And if you like the Urban Decay Born to Run palette, same quality amazing. Oh yes, I love this one. Oh, I knew I was going to love this one though because A, I love Viseart mattes and B, the colors in here were much different than any of the other colors that were coming out within other palettes. This is the Grande Pro number three. This was sent to me and I, I, I love it. I love it so much. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, let me open it up. I got some of the prettiest colorful looks with this. Obviously this is not geared to anybody who does not wanna use color or is not a fan of color. This is for somebody who wants to play and wants to go outside of the box. I am one of those people, look in my eyes today. My favorite look that I did with it was with this shade right here. I posted on Instagram, I'll post a picture right here as well. I used this shade, this shade, and I think this one here, and a little bit of this. I love the way that this came out. It just looked stunning. And to be able to get the amount of pigmentation out of a shade like this is insane. A lot of the times you get these type of colors and they don't have the pigmentation. You put them on your eyes and they're just kind of chalk off. That's not the case with this palette at all. It is one of my favorite colorful palettes that have been done point blank, period. Love it. Absolutely love it and definitely would recommend it. Also, another thing I want to point out, when I was doing the three different looks, the two first ones I did, I used a lot of different shades. So I was packing on color after color after color after color. None of them got patchy. All of them held their own. They all blended out well. They all had pigmentation. And again, that's not something that happens a lot, especially again with these type of colors, they can just come chalky or they just come off the inner, that inner corner, the outer corner. 
and create a muddy mess. And that just didn't happen with this palette. So that's one another reason why I love it so much. Two more, you guys, just two. <laughs> this is from ColourPop, the So Jaded palette with Kathleen Lights. This is a very well-rounded palette. I feel like if you're looking for something that kind of just has it all, this is it because you're going to have your oranges, you're going to have your greens, you're going to have your purples, you're going to have your neutrals. This contains one of the super sock, super, super sock, super sock, super shock shadows, and then two glitters. I had no issues with this palette at all. Other than this shade right here, Fluorite, I felt like could be just a little bit more intense, but that's really that my only critique about the palette. I've used several more shades since then, and I think there's only maybe one or two that I haven't used now, but this is a great palette overall. It is phenomenal, and it is a phenomenal price. It's $39 for 30 shades, yeah great great product and then the last one is the one that i have on my eyes right now and i can already tell you that out of the collection this one is my favorite i'm really excited about this you guys you guys have not heard me talk about this yet because i have not done a review because my eyes hurt <laughs> they don't actually hurt but i've just been washing my face so much and washing my eyes i've lost a few lashes and i'm not okay with that I'm just not okay with that. So I'm trying to do this video of this palette I'm about to talk about just a little bit differently. I'm just going to be doing looks with each of the videos that I'm doing. Like today, I recorded this look, and then I'm just going to compile it all into one. But I have to tell you, this is my favorite out of the three of the Pro Pigment palettes, the Norvina Collection. This is number three and it is beautiful. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on, let me get it open. I'm not used to the nail thing yet. The colors in here, I feel like you have more of a variety. If you're looking to buy one of these and you want one that has more neutral options, this one has more neutrals. It has a variety of the oranges, the purples, the reds, the greens. You have a little bit of blue in here and then the neutrals. I feel like this is the most well-rounded, well put together, and it is my favorite out of all of them. Again, you guys will see several different looks with this palette. I'm just going to do a, I don't know, four or five different looks and I'll put it all in one video for you guys. But if you were wondering my thoughts, this one is my favorite as far as that collection goes. I don't know yet <laughs> what my favorites are in all of these and how I would rank them, but I'm going to do my best to get that out for you as well. Now I am going to get into the fails and then we'll get into the giveaway. I feel very, very guilty about mentioning this. I don't want to mention this. I'm a big fan. Lady Gaga, I love you. I really do. But I feel like a lot of things went wrong with this collection. As you can see here, I have three of the little bundles of the House Laboratories collection. And each of these have one of the liquid eyeshadows, a lip liner, and a gloss. So first thing, I didn't like the pre-order. I didn't like that I had to wait an entire month to get these when they showed up on my door. It was kind of like, oh yeah, I ordered those. I was really excited about them in the moment. And then I think I lost some of the excitement, especially when I went to go use them. It's very rare for me to not do a full review and show you guys what I'm talking about, what, even if I don't like a product. But this one to me, was such a letdown that I, like, I don't know if you can tell, I feel kind of just saddened by it. I don't know how else to explain it, but I'm going to show you. Oh, let's see. Okay, hold on. This is Chained Ballerina. A, I'm not a huge fan of the packaging. No big deal, though. No big deal. Um, these are very pigmented. They are very pigmented. You have to give her that. The glosses are fine. They're nothing special. The liners are fine. Nothing special. Let me see. Um, this is the shade in point. I just did a video with this, but I'm just going to show you. I love that color, but 
they don't last on the lips and these don't last on the eyes. So that's my problem. They're made to be where they can kind of blend out really easily. And so you can smoke it out, which is great. This shade right here is, what color are you? So tiny, my little eyes, Dynasty. And you do have to kind of shake these up to get the sparkle out. And then I'm going to show you, which is, this one's my favorite out of all of them. I really like this color, but then again, Stila. Just saying, Stila. All right. That's it right there. So you can see all three of these. Now I'm gonna wait a few minutes. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna wait, and then I'm gonna show you what happens whenever you run your fingers across these. It's not good. Like give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. Now hopefully you guys can see that these are a little bit more on the matte side now, like the actual color. I don't know if you can see the sparkle or not, but let's just do this. And this is what happens on my eyes. So I went to wear one of these. I think it was the nude one. And it creased. I'm not somebody who has issues with creasing at all. I almost never have issues with creasing. It moved around. It looked funky. It got really funky on my inner corner. I thought, okay, well, maybe it is just the nude shade. I used the black one the same thing. A good thing about it is that yes, you can put these on the eyes and you can have it to where you can blend out the edges. That's amazing. But the fact that they just kind of move around like that, I, I can't, I can't. So I can't suggest them. And with everything else being very average, I was let down. And I'm even let down by this packaging to me is, it smells, what's that? that plasticky oh, smell. I'm just, ugh, okay, I'm done. I'm going to, I'm going to quit being mean because I feel like I'm being mean. My next fail is from Natasha Denota. So she made it to the top of the list and then she made it to the bottom of the list with this little guy right here, which is the Glow Gold Shimmer Duo. I like her formula. What are these called? The um, Super Glow and Diamond Powders. She's had these in palettes. This is not the first time she's come out with this formula. I knew to expect glitter. I knew that it was going to be a little bit more shiny on the skin, but I like them. There's just something about it that just is so beautiful. And this is not the same formula. There's something different about this. <laughs> so I found that this shade right here was way too copper. Like, look, now, way too copper for my skin tone. And it just did not have the same shine of the other powders. And I felt like I really had to build it up and blend it out. And I, feel like, I felt like it was kind of patchy at the same time. When I got closer and looked, it was a little patchy. And then this right here, uh, no, it is just glitter. There's like no sheen to it. No way of it like melting into the skin like the other diamond powders have in the past. This just, A, it doesn't stick. B, it's an unflattering shade of gold. And C, I, I just don't like it. I thought this was an absolute dud. And it's not just because of the color for my skin tone. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. I would definitely suggest any of the other Diamond Glow or Super Glow formulas. Like They are so much better than this one. I'm not sure what happened with that. And then the last fail is Huda Beauty. I I'm irritated, you guys. I'm so irritated. As you can see, I have two here. This is the Huda Beauty Anniversary, what are these called? Power Bullet Matte Lipsticks. I love this shade. Anniversary is one of my favorite, favorite shades. Let me go ahead. Oh, let me, sh this has been on my hand for a while. So let me just show you what happens to the liner. <laughs> see, yeah. It's gone. <laughs> I forgot about the liner altogether. Anyway, the Lady Gaga liner. This is anniversary. I'm gonna have to keep it down pretty low because it broke. I really, 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 really like this color. And I ordered one, loved it, and it broke. So this is the one. And as you can see, 
I have not used it that much. It broke at the base and I thought, okay, it's just a fluke. You can see I still even have like the little triangle at the top. So I thought, okay, I'm going to purchase another one and you know, this one's going to be fine. Can't get it open. <laughs> it's not fine. Second use, it broke. There it is, right there. Same exact thing, and I am so irritated by it. I know that this is not everyone's favorite formula of matte lipstick, but I really like this, and I really like to put a gloss over top of it. But now I have two anniversaries that uh, just fall out. They just fall out, so I can't even use them. So it irritates me so much. I do not think I'm gonna purchase any more of the Power Bullets because of that. I have not used the other ones as much as I did those. I would say like the second one I bought, it was the second time I used it and it was done. The first one I got, I wanna say I used it four or five times and then I was having to use <laughs> my lip brush to apply it. But I don't even feel like using a lip brush anymore. I'm over it. Okay, now for a giveaway. Now wasn't that just an emotional roller coaster? all of my favorites, and then being sad about my fails, and now a giveaway of one of my favorite products and one of my favorite brands. Tatcha reached out to me for this giveaway. They know how much I love the Silk Peony Eye Cream, and they asked me, Mel, would you like to do a giveaway? And I was like, uh, yes, yes, please. <laughs> so they are sending over five silk peonies for you guys. I have not received them yet. I think my tracking says that it's going to be here on the 8th. And I didn't want to wait to do my video for my favorites too late. I know that they're coming. I will be personally sending these out to you. All you have to do is let me know that you want it and give me an email address or an Instagram handle to be able to uh, reach out to you. So this video, let me look, let me look. It's October 4th when this video is going up, so I'm going to give you guys a week. So on October 11th at 12 o'clock p.m., Central time, that is my time, I'm going to reach out to five different people and I'm going to tell you, hey, congratulations, you have won. You will have 24 hours to get back to me or I will have to pick somebody else. So make sure you are checking your method that you have left for me, whether it be your email or Instagram. Make sure you're checking at 12 o'clock Central time to see if you are one of the winners. The giveaway is international. You can be in anywhere I will send it to you no problems just void where you can't do it like there are certain countries and stuff where you can't do giveaways whatever so void where prohibited but other than that just enter let me know where to send it 12 o'clock central time I'm repeating myself I know five giveaway winners yada yada but Thank you, Tatcha, so much. This is one of my favorite eye creams of all time, and I'm so excited that I'm going to be able to share it with you guys. Anywho, that is it. Let me know what your favorites and fails are down below, and if you are wanting to be entered into this giveaway, give me a method to reach out to you. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.